I'm off. So hi folks and welcome back to another video here at Brooklyn's Loft. Um, just really an update on how proceedings are going here. Um, really the video is more testing um, some equipment I got so um, I thought I would just jump in here and basically give you an update on um, what's happening. So as you can see the hens um, have been out flying now for uh, roughly about two weeks. Um, it's been a natural progression um, with with flying. I did try to obviously film the hens flying there, but this is the first day that they've seemed to, to clear off a bit. Uh, so obviously a good change that they're coming into a bit of uh, condition. For the last two weeks, we've just been letting the hens and cocks out. Um, first week really is just let them go out. Um, there's no real force flying or anything like that. It's just trying to get them used to, because we locked down over September um, and whatnot, uh, it does take the birds a wee while to adjust um, to uh, flying again. Um, so just allow them to, to do what they want. Um, naturally, we use a flag, so we would then start introducing the flag uh, for, you know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, you know, and, and progress at each stage. Um, and that's the same with, with cocks and hens. So with that, you know, you're not, obviously, hopefully not putting too much stress um, on the birds. Um, you're allowing them to obviously enjoy the outside and fly at their own will really. So yeah, that's really it. Um, just don't force it. Um, let them fly at their own will. They will, I mean, our feeding, um, we reduce the feeding a bit in terms of uh, what they are fed. Um, normally we add a lot of barley into their mix now um, and you know work that sort of winter winter fat off um, because we power our racers up too and they're usually fed two three times a day so with that you know they've gulged um, all that time so it just takes a wee while for them to get but the main thing is just no stress don't stress about it and go from there. <laughs> but yeah, the, the flies are just really for the encouragement. I mean, again, if they weren't putting the effort in and they were trying to land, you know, we normally just remove the flag because um, we don't really want them going and landing on other roofs and stuff. So. <laughs> We normally just let them fly to the point where they're happy. In terms of feeding mix, um, that's basically their mix here. Um, as I say, it's probably about 70 or percent barley and then some corn um, mixed in. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, girl, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, guys! Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on, you! 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 Come on! Come on, you! Come on, you! That's all the hands done. We are now obviously on to the cocks. One cent. One cent. And this is the cocks now going for. Come on, come on. 
Come on. That is now the cock turn out for a fly. It's the same process with the cocks as the hens. The second week we just introduce a flag, 10 minutes, um, and over time then we increase that um, as we see fit. Once we see the appetite get a wee bit better, you know, we normally then introduce the flag for a bit longer because of such a shock to the system from being down in eggs, feeding young ones, um, being too fat to then being forced out. Um, there's a lot of requirement um, from the system of the pigeon, so that's why we don't like to put too much stress on the pigeon. Um, so yeah, it looks like they have disappeared, so we'll just let them crack on. So it's the same principles um, with the cocks, as I said, the hens. Hens, uh, the cocks, out, so they're up to about 30 minutes with flagging too. Um, so I normally just leave them to it. Um, I mean, this is the first sort of day that it seems to be that the cocks sort of disappear, the hens disappeared for, even if it's five minutes, you know what I mean, they're still we're still starting to stretch the wings out a bit, so all in all, pretty good. Um, happy enough with it. Come on, come on, come on, come on, son. come on, 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 son. That's a boy, that's a boy, that's a boys. Come on, 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 come on. the boys just finished the exercising so say get a bite to eat and then it's up to the boxes as I say we have a bit of a rascal at the minute because 12 um, he seems to just take himself off and to the forest, the flats, whatever, um, and sit. So we might have to just, unfortunately, take him out of the team if he doesn't buck his ideas up in the next day or two. So you have to do what you have to do. I mean, the problem with him doing that, I mean, he receives, when he comes home late, you know, he's re receiving very, very little feed. Um, so you'd think he would learn, but he just continues to to do it. Um, and, you know, you're always concerned that, you know, someone follows him. And we uh, obviously need to have a look at that. But this is all what you do in terms of your management. Um, you know, we're, we're big believers in giving pigeons a chance here, and they always get a chance. Um, and yeah, these are just some of the hands obviously resting up after their morning fly. Um, normally, the hands will go out uh, twice a day once racing sort of commences, um, but at the minute, they're just once a day is enough. Um, Again, I can't emphasize enough not allowing additional stress, you know, on the pigeon, but yeah, that's the good. So, happy days. So, 
this here is the hopeful um, for 2023. Um, this is tried to make a video last time um, concerning the young birds, but I had a radio on, so um, it would have copyrighted the video. Um, but all in all, uh, very happy how the young birds are. Um, when weaning, sometimes you're wondering, do any of them sort of go backwards, or um, you always wonder if, you know, making sure they eat and drink and the usual things. I mean, obviously, you try and build it in uh, in the stock law. If we normally keep golly pots in the boxes with with the parents, that you know, when the, when the youngsters are coming out of the bowl. Um, we try and obviously encourage them to eat. So, lucky enough, we have had no issues with with them going backwards. So, um, though they're getting to an age now where they're getting a bit boisterous. Um, at one point, they all sit in the boxes together, and then next minute, they all just want to bait the life out of each other. So. Um, there's not really much um, to go on about uh, this fencing unit in the previous video um, we talked about. They'll probably be in this for a while because this here is the season um, that obviously Mr. Hawk um, normally pays a visit. We have had one, one time. Um, over this sort of period, the hawk has came over the top of this, um, and hopefully it will learn the young birds for where safety is really, um, and trying to learn them that way that you go in the loft. Um, I'll just take you in um, here and show you the other section. This section here. Um, this section is also part of the home part. The only difference is it's just standard boxes in here where the pipo boxes are in that section. Um, just a bit of a priority. Um, what we'll do is once you know we get the full first round over and vaccinated, then we will push uh, the young birds in here. Um, and then we can use that first section um, for the second round. But we are opting to try something slightly different this year. Um, this year is the Megazorb. Um, hopefully, um, it's like a, a pulp, um, a wood pulp. Um, it near enough would remind you of like can't let her the way it is but um just obviously reading about it and obviously hearing people's views on it um normally dad used deep litter every year um just the wood chips and i thought well sure we'll try it this year and see see how it goes um it sort of compacts after a while um so i've let it down and then i'll just go over it and compact it down and then what I can do is just run over the top of it every now and then and take the, the sort of build up of droppings off so again I don't think it's it's not like a, a wonder wonder product um, but hopefully it just keeps the hygiene um, pretty good but yeah that's the young bird for for 2023 as i said all you can do is just cross your fingers and hope that you don't get much sickness or you don't get any issues along the way but with young birds that is not the case
quick look around the stock again. Um, uh, most of the stock now, obviously, are on the second round. Um, there's a. Uh, this here is Stevie's choice. This boy. So it is. So, again, his youngster. It's quite dark, but there's a boy over there. And he will be moved over pretty soon, and that's the hen he's paired with. Lovely. Lovely hen, boy. So yeah, not an awful lot has changed. Oh, easy, easy, easy. Just, uh, they are boisterous, these cocks, boy. So they are. The only thing you find is, well, we find our second round is a neighbour when it comes to, I mean, we normally put, you know, well, when they're on the first round, um, we put the second, second bowl in, um, as you can see, and a lot of times they don't choose the nest in the second bowl, they'll hit the floors and you sort of wonder why, but again, the only issue I find is when the when they lay at, at the door here, um, you have obviously accidents can happen when you stand on eggs, um, hopefully not jumpers. Um, that's the only reason I don't like it, but other than that, um, we just allow them to pick where they wanna go um, and leave them to it. I mean, now that they have their happy on the floor, then I'm not gonna force them into a box. Again, some of the boys here, all second rounds. Um, as you can see. It's hard to believe, to be honest, we had, like we're on our second round right now. Um, you just wonder where time actually goes. Um, these two boys will probably be moved over in the next day or two um, from from the first round. Um, but yeah, it's like, I mean, I remember in December, sitting, pairing all these boys up and you know what I mean? We're, at the end of February, we're on our second round, and you just wonder where time goes. It just goes so quick. But again, this third sort of section in the stock, these are all pretty new birds that we have this year. Um, so we will certainly give them a try and see what they can do. and. Obviously, selection, I think our selection process will be a bit different this year in terms of what stays and what goes. I think, you know, doing my reading on things, you know, selection process. Um, selection pro process is, is pretty cr critical to obtaining the, the good pigeons, but you know, again, you, you, you're a pigeon lover too, and you don't really like getting rid of pigeons and whatnot. But to be successful and do well, I suppose you have to, you know. But this is all just the learning process to it, as uh, on top of the pigeons, you know. Let's go right here. There's the mother of Stevie's Choice. I know I tend to harp on maybe about Stevie's Choice, but there's just so many pigeons to actually try and remember. But 
definitely will see how. And to be honest, my memory side of things is, is never really great, but what can you do? Um, we will just take it day by day and hopefully with time we will obviously get up to speed with what pigeons we have here. Um, well, for me anyway. But um, So that's really it guys. Um, there's not really much to it, it's just more conditioning. The, the old old bird race team now um, getting them fit for for racing which starts in like I think it's five weeks on on Friday so incredible to think we're we're at this point um, so it's it's all go uh, again if we make the first race we make the first race if we're not ready we're not ready um, Dad has always been in a position that you know the pigeon will come in its own time in terms of conditioning them we will do our utmost best to get them ready but again if they don't move how, how we like or you know there's issues along the way you know again we don't force it um something looking at pigeons wise is stress factors there are certain stress factors that are in your control and there are certain amount that are not um, and, and them things that are not in your control well you know you just have to deal with it but you know what you are in control with you know in terms of feeding um, in terms of you know flan and force flan and, and things of that nature that's what you are in control of um, as I said earlier in the video you, you're God in a, in a sense to these pigeons so um, it all comes under your decision um, the pigeons normally tell you what they need and how they need it um, and that there is a learning process in itself but you know you can notice things when you do take time in, in the loss and and uh, observe your pigeons and, and watch your pigeons so yeah we'll just continue rattling away here um again it's just more of an update video more than anything else but uh thanks very much for for watching and again if you can and um, please do hit the like and subscribe it will it will help push the channel a wee bit um we are hopefully as i said I got some equipment here to, to try out that have been trying during this video in terms of mics and stuff and maybe we will get around and you know get started with our law visits and whatnot so uh, stay tuned for that and uh, we will catch you in the next one. Thanks guys.